So this morning, I want to bring us one step closer to the cross as we consider one of the most memorable and iconic moments of Jesus' ministry, where he drives out animals and money changers from the temple. The Bible says the Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling a cattle and sheep and doves and the money changers seated at their tables. And making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. Now, this is often referred to as a cleansing of the temple, right? That's how we usually talk about this. This is the cleansing of the temple. But I have to admit, if you looked in the bulletin, uh, I have to take issue with uh, my own sermon title. This is not a cleansing of the temple exactly. If by cleansing we mean that Jesus by this is doing something to somehow improve how the temple operates, or that he is correcting some kind of injustice, that's not what the text says. I think the story is often portrayed as Jesus is coming into the temple to right some wrong, that he's angry about fraudulent money changers or salesmen who are uh, making an unjust profit. But in none of the four Gospels does the text ever indicate that. And even outside of the New Testament, we never get any indication that there was any perceived corruption happening with this specific practice. So what Jesus is taking issue with is something that is essential to the functioning of the, of the temple. Now, what do I mean by that? As the gospel indicates, Jews from all over the world, wherever they might live, are required to come here uh, during Passover to Jerusalem uh, to offer sacrifice and same at other times uh, during the year. Now, not everyone owns the appropriate animal that is required to make sacrifice. Or maybe even if you did own it, you wouldn't be able to travel long distances with all of these farm animals. So, the temple is obliged to offer for sale the animals that will be required for sacrifice to the pilgrims. Even Mary and Joseph would have uh, themselves taken advantage of this when they came to dedicate Jesus at the temple and were required to offer two doves. They weren't carrying these around with them, but they bought them here at the temple, right? So for Jesus to drive out all of the animals and the money changers, he's not reforming the temple system. He is, in essence, putting an end to it. And why? The Bible says that the blood of bulls and goats cannot take away sins. This system was only ever here as a shadow of the reality of Christ. And now the reality of Christ is here. The words of John the Baptist have already gone out. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. So Jesus is not so much cleansing the temple in the sense of improving or reforming it, Jesus is enacting a symbolic destruction of the temple. And even the words of destruction we find on Jesus' own lips, because as he does this, the people there begin to question him. What right do you have to do this? What sign can you give us that you have the authority to be doing these things? What sign can you give us? And Jesus answered them and said, destroy this temple, and in three days... I will raise it up. And they replied, saying, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days. But, the Bible says, he was speaking of the temple of his body. So that is the sign. The first and most obvious meaning is that his authority as the Son of God will be revealed in his death and resurrection. Jesus says, if you're looking for a sign, then destroy this body, and in three days it will be raised up. 
that is the sign that he will give them. But if we consider the letters of Paul and the rest of the New Testament, specifically his letters to the Corinthians, help us understand that there's actually a, even a deeper level to what Jesus is saying here. Paul helps us to see that the body of Christ includes even the church. We are the body of Christ, right? And it is in this context of being the body of Christ that we also are the new temple. Listen to what Paul says. Like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building on it. Each builder must choose with care how to build on it, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has already been laid, and that foundation is Jesus Christ. And do you not know that you all are God's temple, and God's Spirit dwells in you? For God's temple is holy, and all of you are that temple. So, when in chapter 6, Paul says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? The body he is speaking of there is the body of Christ, the church. We are the temple. As he says in 2 Corinthians, we are the temple of the living God. Christ, therefore, is replacing the temple with his own body. As the Bible says, Christ is the foundation of that temple. And we are the living stones built into a spiritual house. And in this new temple, every temple has a priest. And in this new temple, Jesus himself is the great high priest. But the Bible also says that we are a nation of priests. And every temple offers sacrifice and what is the sacrifice of this new temple other than the sacrifice of Christ on the cross? But you see, just as Jesus Christ is the foundation, but we participate in him as being the living stones. And just as Jesus Christ is the one great high priest, but we participate in his priesthood by being a nation of priests. So also, because Jesus is the Paschal Lamb, but we participate in his sacrifice as we present our own bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. The Bible says, this is your spiritual worship. This is your responsibility. So just as the temple offered sacrifice every morning and every evening, so we have that responsibility every day and every night to offer ourselves up to God, to take up our cross and follow him, to go and be crucified with Christ so that it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. As Paul tells the Corinthians, I die every day. And what does that mean? But that every day he totally surrenders himself over to God and to God's will. So in light of this, we can go back to our gospel reading this morning and see in new eyes what it is that Jesus is doing in the temple. Why did he drive out the money changers and the animals that are required for sacrifice? Because in the new temple, that temple which is his body where he is the foundation and the great high priest where he is the Passover lamb, in this temple, there are no animals for sale. The sacrifice you bring to this temple is yourself. As Augustine says, Christ casts out from his temple those who sell because in this new temple, we do not buy and sell. We ourselves are bought at a price. So may Christ himself be in our church and cast out that part of us who comes to make a profit. 
May Christ cast out of us that part of us who comes to church only for what we can gain rather than what we have to give. May Christ come into our hearts and cleanse us from all greed and rivalry and pride and selfish ambition. May he come and destroy these hearts of stone in order to create in us a new heart.